look at legacy point one. Define what it means to be a man. Here's the question. Where do your sons learn what it means to be a man? Do you remember when your kids were growing up and they always said, look, dad, look, dad, I'm just like you. The place that they most readily learn what it means to be a man is you. But especially as they grow older in the culture and through the teenage years, more and more the culture is going to be telling them what it means to be a man. And your silence at that time would be very significant in the fact that your definition of a man is likely different than what our culture would say. What does our culture say about what it means to be a man? Look at all the teenage movies and the rite of passage is usually sexual promiscuity. And sometimes dad, by just staying silent or maybe with a little wink and grin and saying boys will be boys, is saying volumes about, well, maybe being a man is just about sexual conquest. Is that what God says? What does He say a man is? It's so neat because when God wants to talk to us about what is important in life, He often tells a story. And uh, the true story of uh, the, the lives of David and Joseph and then Jesus will be uh, the key pieces of our focus for this retreat. And through that, your sons will learn what it means to be a godly man. And it'll be summarized on, uh, we, use, we use the baton as a part of, of how we help the boys remember this on, on into adulthood. Uh, the, 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 the take home point for the whole retreat is where dad says, I bless you to be a man of God. Be courageous as David was, be honorable as Joseph was, and be faithful to the end as was Jesus. Also, it's not just these men in the Bible who speak into your son's lives. It'll be the Christian men gathered around at this retreat. You need each other to pass this message along. And as the boys see other dads speaking words of faithfulness, they're gonna realize, hey, I'm not alone. We're not alone. It's not just my dad and me. It's we're part of a much bigger picture and we have God with us. This is not just the family of God, this is the family of godly men. Now, Roger, now even though we have the baton, um, we've discovered that it's not always easy for kids to, and dads to remember the blessing. So we've got this uh, little way that we're gonna help dads remember it and their sons. What is that? Well, it always starts off with, I bless you to be a man of God. That part's easy, but then it gets confusing. We've got the words courageous, honorable, and faithful to the end. And, and what were those words again? How did they get and in what order? And in what order? Remember the word cough, but spell it this way C K H F. Cough. Courageous, honorable, faithful. Now, why it's easy for me to remember this is I remember seventh grade football physical when I first heard the doctor say, turn your head and cough and that was an initiation into some kind of manhood i think i'm thinking if you if you talk about this with the guys and sons at the retreat it's they're going to remember it you know so it's i bless you to be a man of god be courageous be honorable be faithful to the end Excuse me. <laughs> okay and let me tell you why it's so important to remember that it's because throughout the retreat Dads, you're going to bless your son with those words. And how you'll do it, in many cases, is to stand behind your son and to put your hands on your son and to say, Mike, I bless you to be a man of God, to be courageous, be honorable, be faithful to the end. It's that simple. And then you also may want to add a few words about, and since you have that very determined spirit, I know that you're going to do great things for God. You might add another prayer at the end of it. But that blessing event is going to be given throughout the retreat three times, and at the end, that's when the baton is going to be passed during the last blessing event. The kids will not see this before then.
And one more blessing your son needs to hear from you. He needs to hear you say, son, you've got what it takes to face whatever comes your way. You've got what it takes to be a godly man. Yes. So let's talk about it. Here's the question that we want you to talk about. What things did your dad do or say that said, you've got what it takes, I believe in you? If not your dad, then who? It may have happened later in life.